Hey yo, what is going on everybody? We are back with another how to prepare your characters for tier 4 part 2. Part 1 got so much love and I do indeed see it. And because I have some additional tips to say, here we are with a part number 2. I hope you all enjoy and learn a little something before we get into tier 4 in a month or so. And if you do, click on that subscribe button and I'll continue making more tier 4 content for you all. Alright, so number 1 gems. You should be stocking up on some gems. Now why do I say this? Because the bound level 7 gems you all are putting on your rat alts will not transfer over to tier 4. Meaning, you will likely get gate kept very very quickly once people start having a superiority complex when they get their tier 4 gems. This guy has tier 3 gems and a 0.1% attack power difference? Reject! Denied! Unfortunately, I can already see this happening, so make sure to save up on gems for your alts. Now, another thing with gems. The conversions make it so that it is actually worth it to convert your gems to tier 4 up until level 10, the damage ones. If we see the chart, we notice that you do get a slight damage increase by converting your gems. But the level 10 actually reduces your damage. So, I would suggest that you convert all your gems to tier 4 except for level 10. Now, if you're Jeff Bezos or you partake in illicit RMT activities, and can go to level 9 tier 4, then I would suggest you do that. Otherwise, keep those level 10 tier 3 gems until you can afford to upgrade to 9 plus tier 4 gem. Please, I do not want to see level 8 tier 4 damage gems from you guys. Okay, number 2 is ability zones. So, Let's go on over here. So with the engraving changes, if you haven't heard yet, there, the eight facets are obsolete uh, right here. So you get level one, two, three, four from six, seven, nine, ten nodes. So that eight, eight rock you have is not as good in tier four as it was in tier three. It is unfortunate they did this this way. I guess Smilegate just hates the number eight. So anyway, cut up a new rock and try to get 6, 7, 9, or 10 nodes. Now you're probably going, But Andy, 8 facets is the same as 7 facets. Yes, but when you consider that you got an 8-8 eight, eight rock, and that, that's the same as a 7-7 seven, seven rock, by the way. 8-8 eight, eight rock has 16 facets. That was potentially a 9-7 rock. That is now equal to a 7-7. Seven, seven. It would be actually better to just get a 9-6 rock than an 8-8 eight, eight rock in tier 4. Now, you can do whatever you want. If you want to stick with your 8-8 eight, eight rock, you'll still get those 7 points. This is all just advice coming from a bozo, so you know, take it with a grain of salt. Number 3. I mentioned in part 1 that you should be taking advantage of the Bloodstone Shop by donating to your guild and checking in like this. I go into my guild, I check in, and I donate, which I already have. What I didn't mention is that you should also be doing the raid matches for extra Bloodstones to get ready. And oh, trust me, you are going to want to get ready to hone in Tier 4 by buying all the mats eventually available from the Bloodstone shop. Better to have more than to not have enough. Start doing those raid matches. So go in here, pick the boss that you can do for your character, press challenge, enter base. Done. Simple. Alright. Number four is accessories. So tier three accessories are now obsolete. We do not need them. So before your character goes to tier 4, 
you should sell all those accessories you were kind of saving in your storage. Like, I, I have a ton of accessories that, you know, I think, oh, maybe someone will like it, right? Maybe somebody. Uh, and it might be worth later. Or I just didn't see anything in the auction house, so I didn't place it in the auction house yet. Uh, newsflash. The prices have lowered and will continue to lower as time goes on. I've been selling all my quote-unquote junk accessories that I've been sitting in my storage. And I've actually made some decent gold. Even if you're selling for 1 to 5k per accessory, if you're a hoarder like I am, like look, look at how many, this is not even it. I have more in my pet storage that I'm too shameful to show, but you get the idea. You can sell those and actually make some decent gold. You know, I, I made around 100,000 gold so far, and I still haven't sold all my accessories. Even if I sell all these for 1,000, how many is that? That's uh, 3, 6, 9, 11, 30, 33K for all this and more, plus more characters. Sell those accessories as soon as possible. Number five, engravings. So you may be noticing that the engraving prices have increased so much. There is a reason for this. With the new introduction to relic engraving, so I'm not a market expert, so take this financial advice with a grain of salt, but I predict that the engraving prices will continue to increase, especially when tier four hits and we start getting those relic engraving books. The demand for legend engraving books will go up. If you don't want to FOMO, all good, then you would just have to wait for the book prices to eventually go down again. But by then, it will take many months. I believe that the best price to buy is yesterday, and the second best price is today. It's already gotten really expensive, and what do you know? Adrenaline is the highest, because adrenaline in Tier 4 is the best engraving. So, as you can see, it's, it's clearly reflecting here. So, you know, take my, take my advice with a grain of salt. You don't have to do it. I'm just the messenger here. Anyway, number six is save all your fusion materials. Even if you hit 1620 or you did your advanced honing and got to 1630, keep those prime fusion materials. Why, you might ask? Because you can actually convert them five to one to the new tier four fusion material. It might not be a lot, but I don't want people thinking that their fusion materials are now worthless and they just throw it away. Please don't do that. I would also suggest to continue buying the Mari Shop fusion materials if you have lower than 1620 alts. Because let's say that the new fusion materials are insanely expensive. Well, now you were the smart one that took advantage for the remaining one month and bought a ton of prime fusion materials that you can now convert. Only convert if it's worth it though. Make sure to see the market price when tier four comes out. Otherwise, you can use it on your alts. So it's a safety. Number seven, if you have the time, do life skills. I am expecting an increase in life skill mats when tier four comes out. Now, if the bots just suddenly come out, then probably not. So again, take this financial advice with a grain of salt. I am no financial expert, but what I'm predicting is once we're able to craft it in the stronghold, people are going to start buying all the life skill, life skill mats. Okay, we finally made it to the end of this video. Woo! That was seven additional tips that you can do to prepare your characters for tier four. As always, if you are enjoying this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.